In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use Windows Sandbox. Windows Sandbox is a built-in feature in Windows 10 and 11 Pro and Enterprise Editions that lets you run untrusted apps in a secure, isolated environment. It's like a temporary virtual machine that resets every time you close it. It's perfect for safely testing software or visiting suspicious websites without risking your main system. First, let's make sure that our system can support it. Press Ctrl, Shift, and Escape on your keyboard to open up Task Manager. Then go to the Performance tab and click on CPU. In the bottom right hand corner, look for Virtualization. It should say Enabled. If it's disabled, you'll need to restart your computer, enter your BIOS, and enable the virtualization setting. I have a video on how to do this, and I'll leave a link for it in the description below. Now that we have virtualization enabled, we need to ensure that we're using a supported edition of Windows. To check, click on the Start menu and open up Settings. Then navigate to System and click on About. Under the Windows Specifications section, look for the Edition line and make sure it says you're using Windows 10 or 11 Pro or Enterprise. Unfortunately, Windows Sandbox does not run on Windows Home Editions. Once confirmed, open Control Panel, now click Programs, then Programs and Features, and click on Turn Windows Features on or off on the left hand side of the screen. A new window will open, and scroll down and check the box for Windows Sandbox. Then click on OK. Windows will then apply the changes and prompt you to restart your computer to complete the installation. After rebooting, Launch Windows Sandbox from the Start menu. A fresh Windows environment will open. You can copy and paste files like app installers directly from your main system into the Windows Sandbox to run them safely. Another option is to share a folder from your host machine. Just click the three dots in the top right corner of the sandbox window to open up a drop down menu. Here you'll find options to make the sandbox window full screen, disable microphone and webcam access in Windows Sandbox, turn off clipboard redirection between Windows Sandbox and your host machine, and share a folder. If you choose share folder, you can select a folder from your host system to make available inside the sandbox. Once selected, a shortcut to that folder will appear on the sandbox desktop, giving you full access to its contents. Keep in mind, any changes you make or software you install will be wiped once you close the sandbox, leaving no trace on your real PC. It's the perfect way to safely test suspicious apps or browse sketchy websites without putting your system at risk. One reason I use Windows Sandbox is to safely check out suspicious sponsorship emails I get from my YouTube channel. Sometimes, scammers pretend to be representatives from big companies, like in this example where someone claimed to be from Razer. They sent over a media kit that supposedly included a contract. If I download the kit and move it into Windows Sandbox, I can extract the contents without risking my actual system. Inside the media kit, we got some video files, a Razer logo, a DLL file, which is already a red flag, and what appears to be a PDF contract. But if we enable file name extensions, we can see that this so-called PDF file is actually a .exe file 
disguised with a PDF icon. This kind of trick is really common. If you don't have file extensions visible, it's easy to accidentally double click it, thinking it's a regular document, when in reality it's actually malware. Thankfully, with Windows Sandbox, I can safely run the file. In this case, it just throws an error, but what it's supposed to do is steal Chrome session tokens, giving the attacker access to any accounts you're logged into, including your YouTube channel. Scams like this have even fooled big creators in the past, like Linus Tech Tips, whose channel was briefly hijacked to stream a crypto scam. But with Sandbox, I can close the window with no harm done. We can further configure Windows Sandbox settings with WSB files. To begin, open Notepad or any text editor, and begin with an opening and closing configuration tag. Inside this, you can customize the environment. For example, to disable networking, add an opening and closing network tag, and give it the value disable. To increase the available RAM in the sandbox, use the memory in MB tag with the amount of RAM you'd like to allocate in megabytes. So 8192 for 8GB. If you want to block clipboard sharing, use the clipboard redirection tag with the disable value. If you are interested in seeing all of the different configuration options, I'll leave a link for the documentation in the description. After adding your desired settings, save the file with a .wsb extension and be sure to choose all files in the Save as Type dropdown. Once saved, just double click the file to launch Windows Sandbox with those settings applied. Now that Sandbox has been launched, you can see that networking and clipboard redirection have been disabled and 8GB of RAM has been allocated. And that brings us to the end of the video. If it helped, please leave a like, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.